Uh, it's recording now, right? Okay. Yeah, so, okay, let me repeat again. Let me repeat again. We are going to finish today, as I said, and now we are discussing, you know, the concept of liberation from the perspective of a family of refugees. Um, Arab armies are entering Palestine, he said to us. The father is very happy. In the middle of the night, he wakes him up. The father wakes the narrator up, and they start running behind the Arab soldiers, believing, believing that those Arab armies were going to liberate, liberate Palestine. We know now, of course, we are thinking retrospectively. We are, we are 72 years after the Nakba. 2020, and we know what happened in 1948. In fact, we were betrayed. We were betrayed not by the armies, not by the soldiers, but by the leaders of the Arab world at the time. You know, King Farouk, King Abdullah, etc., etc. So the father, after he starts throwing cigarettes, chocolate, etc., etc., to the you know soldiers, he goes back home. And he starts crying. So let's see what is the conclusion. Liberation means for them, for them, for the Palestinian refugees in 1948, and I'm sure some of you would agree, I do agree with them, liberation means right of return, means return of all Palestinian refugees, the villages, the towns, cities, cities, Yaffa and Akka, they're from Akka, right? From which they were ethnically cleansed. They were ethnically cleansed in 1948. For them, liberation means returning. Any solution, according to them, any solution that doesn't guarantee their right of return is not liberation not liberation. Are we clear? You know, we need to be clear about this, according to the story. So let's read together. After that day, which day? The day when the, when the Arab armies uh, entered Palestine, life passed slowly. That was not the day, was not the end of their life as refugees. That was the, not the beginning of their journey back home, back to Palestine. So after that day, life passed slowly. We were deceived by announcements and by the bitter truth. Remember, he said bitter truth, or extremely sad, bitter truth, sour, sad reality. Grimness started to invade our faces. Notice he doesn't say uh, your father's face only or your mother's face, our faces. So everybody said, no longer child. He's no longer child. He understands that this is a tragedy. The word Nakba, they started using the word Nakba at the time. I'm sure you know this. Grimness, grimness started to invade our faces. Your father found it difficult to talk about Palestine, the land. Remember the title. Remember the title. Okay, the land of sad challenges. He found it difficult to talk about Palestine. When you know, you know, when you when you lose um, some somebody very dear to you, something you love, you cannot live without. And then that thing goes away, disappears completely. You find it difficult to talk about it. He found it difficult to talk about the stein or the happy days in his orange groves or his houses. Notice how many times, excuse me, how many times he repeated the word orange. So he's not talking about literal oranges now. It's much, much more than that. It's a huge metaphor. A huge metaphor, as we said last time. We were, we, we children, his sons and daughters, we were the walls of his tragedy. So notice he uses the word tragedy. Okay? 
use it in a, you know, a second ago. And now, we were the words, whenever the father looked at us, he remembered, he remembered his tragedy. Uh, we were the words of his tragedy and cunning enough to know the meaning behind his early morning shouting. The father would wake up in the morning and shout, and we understood what he meant. What did he say? He said, go to the hell, hell, and never come back before noon. Just leave me. I don't want to see you. Why? Because they remind him of the tragedy. Two rather double-folded tragedy. Two problems. One political, close the land, the land of sad oranges. The second is social. He cannot feed them. He cannot feed his family, his children. We knew that he wanted to distract us from asking for breakfast. Clear? In the morning, they wake up in the morning, of course, no breakfast available. So the father will say, go to the hill and pray and never come back or don't come back until the afternoon. Social, socioeconomic. The family is becoming poor. The family is becoming poor. Things began to de deteriorate. Deteriorate. Okay, go down. What does he mean by things? We will find. Of course, social. We will see more. Political. Definitely. Any simple issue. Now he's talking about, you know, the life of his family. The impact. Here is the point. I will ask you this question later. The impact of the Nakba, the loss of the land of oranges on his family. Here we go. Any simple issue was enough to ignite your father's anger. Father would become very angry when anybody would ask for anything. When one of us asked him something, he would jump as if electrocuted and then scan us with his eyes. He would look at us like this is a crazy man. Of course, angry, angry. Damned idea festered in his mind. What is it? We will see. Damned idea, terrible idea. He stood up suddenly, as if he would just found a solution to his dilemma. So somebody asked him something, one of the kids, one of the kids asked him something. The father couldn't, the father couldn't take it. So he started, he just jumped and he started looking at us, of course, with extreme anger, extreme anger. He stood up sudden, suddenly as if he had just found a solution to his dilemma. What's the solution? What's the solution he found? Let's see. Out of feeling that he was strong enough to put an end to his tragedy, he thought that um, he would be able to put an end to his tragedy. The tragedy is looking after his family, of course, in addition to you know returning to Palestine. So, but now the problem is the kids. They want to eat, they want food, etc. So he stood up suddenly as if, um, uh, I'm sorry, I'm lost. He had just found a solution to his dilemma. Um, uh, I'm lost. After feeling that he was strong enough to put an end to his Tragedy. Look how many times he repeats the word tragedy. And out of the horror, one feels, out of the horror, one feels taking a disastrous action. He started talking nonsense. You know, when you are extremely angry, you start talking nonsense. You no know, meaningless words. Meaningless words. Nonsense. He started turning left and right as if looking for something, as if looking for something. He started turning left and right, as if looking for something we couldn't see. They couldn't see it, but he's looking for something. So what was the father looking for while he was in that mood? Which mood? Anger. Anger. Then he jumped up the box. Box which we brought with us from Akka. Okay, you know that they are from Akka. 
So they, he was looking for a box, but what was inside that box in order to solve his own problem. Let's see. He emptied its contents, he emptied the box in a hysterical, frightening way. You know, very angry, he's very angry, hysterical, you know, hysterical, as if led, as if led by her maternal intuition, the mother now. She understood, the mother understood what was happening. Your mother must have grasped what was going in his mind, his mind, father's mind. The mother was looking at the father when he was becoming very angry, opened the box, was looking for something. The mother looked at him and she understood. And she started to push us, go, go away, yalla ruhu, go away. And then she started to push us from the house and ask us to run to the hill. Okay. So the father was very angry. Somebody asked him for something, one of the kids, he became very angry, hysterical. He started looking for something. He opened a box, one of the boxes they brought from Atka. The mother at the time understood what was happening and immediately she said, okay, go away, go away. Okay. Against her will, we stuck our faces to the window. So they went outside the house and then they were looking from outside. So they stuck their faces to the windows, and stuck our little ears to its wooden frame. So they wanted to hear eavesdropping, that's what they call it, eavesdropping. So they were listening. They wanted to know what was happening. Frightened, of course. Of course, you know, when, when your parents get annoyed and they become extremely angry and hysterical, etc. As, you know, as a child, you get, get frightened. We had your father saying, look at the conclusion the father is reaching. Pay attention, ya shabab or somebody. I will kill them and kill myself. Wow. Wow. He will kill who? He will kill who? He will kill his children. He will kill his sons and daughters. And then kill himself. That is the only solution he found to that problem. Don't be judgmental, ya sabaya wa shabam. Don't say, what kind of father? No. We're not discussing this. We are discussing the conditions, the conditions, the political conditions, the social, the socioeconomic conditions that lead fathers to reach such, such a conclusion. Fathers reach such a conclusion. Listen, I will kill them. And then I will kill myself. I want to finish it. I am suffering. I am suffering. I can't find food. I cannot return to the land of oranges. So what kind of life is this? For him, there was no solution except, you know what? I want to kill them, I will kill them, and then kill myself. I want to finish it. I want to, I want, and he was screaming. He was screaming, and that's the conclusion. So I wanted to pay attention to the conditions that lead him to such a conclusion. We're clear. This is extremely important. We are reaching the end. I don't like, you know, introductions and ends, beginning and end. okay. the end of our story. The father decides to kill the children. Out of anger, of course. You know, that's a moment of anger. Does he kill them? Of course not, because we know the narrator, an adult, is telling us the story now. Yeah, but you know how many times you become very, very angry and, you know, you heard about, you know, suicide cases this year in Gaza. How many youngsters, how many young people cut their lives? Committed suicide. Of course, if you want to moralize it, Allah, but that's not, that's not the story. We need to understand what is happening. We need to change the conditions that lead People to such conclusions. Now that is revolutionary. That is critical. 
I mean, don't judge. Wait. Okay, what makes the father reach such a conclusion? When a young man living in Khan Yunus, living in Beit Hanun, living in Gaza, living in Rafah, etc., is I cannot take it anymore because I cannot find any solutions. It's extremely dark, extremely pessimistic, grim. What is the solution? I want to take out my life. Of course, we, you and I know that it's not a solution, but we want to understand why. Here we go. Let's see. We started, look at the children. We started peeping through the cracks of the door. We saw your father splayed on the ground, lying on the ground like this, breathing heavily. <sighs> breathing heavily. Gnawing his teeth. Your mother was watching him from a distance. Mother was looking at him. She didn't know what to do. Her face was full of terror. Her face was full of terror, of course. Extremely worried about her husband, the kids. First, first, I didn't understand what was going on, the child, the kid. I remember that the moment I saw a black pistol by his side. Aha. So the father, what was he looking for? He was looking when he opened the box from Akka, you remember? What was he looking for when he emptied the content? He was looking for a gun, a pistol. Yeah, but the pistol is also a symbol. Pay attention. In our first, excuse me, in our first class, we talked about resistance, yes, Abaya, Shabab, resistance literature, etc. Okay. So now we have a pistol. But he wants to use this pistol to kill his children and kill himself, not resistance. We'll see. I remember that the moment I saw a black pistol by his side, I started running. The child understood. I started running as fast as I could, as if escaping a phantom, phantom ghost, which had appeared suddenly. The boy was terrified, extremely frightened. As if escaping phantom ghost. <laughs> I ran away from the house, what the hills. The further I ran from the house, the further I felt myself moving away. Attention, important sentence. Conclusions. The further I ran from the house, the further I felt myself moving away from my childhood. No longer child. Here, finished. Childhood disappears, attention, disappears with the disappearance of the land of sad oranges. Okay? This time disappears, of course, not from our hearts. I'm sure you understand what I'm saying. This time disappears, occupied by Israeli gangs, Zionist gangs. My childhood disappears that's what he's saying i started how now i started to realize that our lives will never be the same of course of course palestine after 1948 is not the same palestine before 1948 you and i know this very well things even as a family now the family for him things were no longer as simple as they once were so life in Palestine before 1948 was simple. I know, you, you must have seen the Tagrib al Palestinian. Okay. Uh, it was not simple as, uh, sorry, things were no longer simple as they once were. And life was no longer something you eagerly look forward to. Wow. Wow. Extremely grim. You know, you want to live your life. And he's saying, we didn't feel like, you know, wanting to live our life. Mom, what is life? What's the meaning of life? And here is the point. One of the major ideas of this story is the meaning of life. The meaning of death, of course. We will come to that in, in our next story, by Hussain Kanafani as well. And then we will go to Russian literature and Senegalese literature. What's the meaning of life? What's the meaning 
of, of death. Um, I want you to have a look at the dedication, al-ihda. Hassan Kanafani gave this story, ihda ard al-burtuqal al-hazin, la ard al-burtuqal al-hazin, man istashhadu wa man sayastashhad. All right? to have a look at you will find it online you can find it online so that's the land of sad oranges that is the land of sad oranges and the question now is what's the meaning of life and what's the meaning of it? he said life is losing its meaning now because we are far from the land of oranges life is losing its meaning because we are far from the land of sad oranges the situation had reached the point of having shot shot the head, his father's conclusion, of course, is the only thing a father could offer his children. The father wanted to shoot every and each one of us, and that is the solution. That's a solution, because he couldn't afford, couldn't afford feeding them. Feeding them, nothing. No food, nothing. Now, of course, no school. So from now on, what happened? We had to watch our step. Be very careful as children. Behave ourselves. Excuse me. Behave ourselves. Keep quiet when father speaks about his problems. You know, children. You know, when uh, parents talk, children make noises because they don't know what's happening. But these children don't want to make their father angry anymore because they know that it is very, very serious. They have already lost, they have already lost their childhood. Of course, I mean, this shouldn't happen to anybody. You don't wish it for anybody. Children are children, whether they are Palestinian or not Palestinian. We wouldn't ask for food. Look at this. We wouldn't ask for food, no matter how hungry we got. We will show obedience. You know, children, I'm hungry, I want to eat, mama, daddy, etc. No, they stop saying this. Because <clears throat> they don't want to irritate, they don't want to irritate their father. We will show obedience. Good boys, good girls, we will show obedience by shaking our heads and smiling when he shouts, he, the father. Go to hell and don't come back till noon. Of course, instead of asking for food, the father, of course, knows that they are hungry, but he also cannot afford feeding them. He cannot afford providing for his family. And then he would say, go pills and don't come back till noon, which means don't ask for food. Your father was still there shaking with fever, fever. That evening, long after the darkness had spread over the house. So they came back, they came back in the evening. The father was suffering from fever as a result of his anger. And his, this is the other word, Impotence, impotence, unable to do anything. So he was impotent. Your mother sat behind him when they came back in the evening, when the children came back in the evening. The mother was sitting behind the father. Our eyes glistened like cats. We looked at them in the dark. Our lips were sealed, closed. As if they were never open, as if they were remnants of the old injury. So it was like a wound, just closed mouths. We were, we were heaped up there, heap, you know, heap one on top of the other. We drawn, look at this one, look at this one. We were heaped up there, withdrawn from our childhood as if saying goodbye to our childhood way here is the point now conclusion away from the land of oranges so father's anger a loss of their childhood is in a way related to the loss 
the land of oranges. Okay? See? Socio political, social and political. And life becomes meaningless after losing the land of oranges. After leaving the land of oranges, what's the meaning of life? Even our childhood disappeared. Even our childhood disappeared. Away from the land of oranges, oranges that died, oranges that died. An old farmer, look at the end of the story now, an old farmer told us, oranges that died, or, uh, sorry, an old farmer, farmer once told us, if, if watered by strange hands. So the oranges die, if they are watered by strange hands, relationship grows between you as a farmer and your orange tree. If somebody else comes and waters your orange tree, what happens to them, the trees? They die. Connection between the farmer, the Palestinian, the oppressed Palestinian, and his or her land. Separate them they die. Separate them, the oranges die, and the farmer dies. As you notice, we lost our childhood, he says. Your father, your father was still sick, thrown down on his bed, and your mother was gnawing tragic tears, tears and tears and tears, that never left her eyes. Wow. So, the mother spent the rest of her life in tears. I mean, imagine that. Imagine that. I mean, the mother spent, we don't know for how long she lived after that, but she kept crying, crying and crying. And, okay. The tears that never left her eyes. I snuck into the room, slipped into the room, and out past. Outcast is also, you know, a refugee, like a stranger, like an outsider. Because I was no longer the same child. That day was a turning point in our life, in my life. That's what he's saying, in our life and in my life. I became like an outcast, like a stranger. This is not the same family that we used to have. This is a different family now. The mother in tears the father is thrown down his bed impotent impotent I saw your father's face okay we are finishing now quiver with broken rage rage extreme anger with broken rage I saw at the same time attention everybody if you are not paying attention, if you have noise around, pay attention now. Conclusion. Because I want to discuss this with you later on. You will tell me what you understand. I saw your father's face covered with broken rage, and I saw at the same time, what did he see? Okay, the father's face, black revolver or black pistol. So the father's face, angry. This is one. Two, black pistol the low table Two. father's face angry face black pistol three and here we go and i want you i want you to discuss it with me inshallah tomorrow or the day after and then we'll give you homework later on near it near it what is it pistol near the pistol what did we have was orange Aha, uh -huh. wow, this is very meaningful. Angry face, father. Pistol and orange. Remember what we said about the orange, so what does it mean? This is, it's like we have an image here, we have an image. All right, pistol, orange, of course the angry face is looking. The orange, what about it, was wrinkled, you know, when you get older, you have wrinkles on your face, right? Lines. 
was wrinkled and dry. Aha. So I have um, wrinkled and dry French pistol and the angry father. What does this mean? I will leave that for you. Okay? I will leave that for you. I want you to try to write just a couple of lines. Tell me what you understand from this conclusion. In relation to the story, right? In relation to the story, orange, wrinkled, dry, orange, pistol, what does that mean within the context of everything that we have been discussing since the beginning of this story? Okay? I will leave it because I want to discuss it with you. I want to listen to you. I will send you the link and I will upload, I will upload files for you today inshallah about the land of sad oranges and i will also try to upload our sec next text i will decide about it i'll find it and then i will upload it but now this is your homework i want you to read the story to read the story again and look at the last picture that he gives us that the narrator gives us and what does it mean what is there a message the message within the context of the text. Don't tell me your opinion about life. Don't tell me your opinion about the Nakba. I want you to tell me from the text. Show me that you understand the text. Okay, Sabaya, we are Shabab. Let's call it a day. Let's finish now. I will send you today or tomorrow the link. Either we either meet today, uh, tomorrow, or the day after, depending on electricity. But you have your homework, which you have to work on today. Um, I will stop now.